Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my time series analysis tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to focus in on visualizations, and I'm going to cover Matplotlib, Seaborn, as well as Plotly, and a whole lot more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to be pulling in information from Yahoo Finance. I went and got Amazon stock data, so you can just go to Yahoo Finance, type in Amazon or whatever you want. Then you click on the historical data tab that's right here. Historical prices, I got daily prices and download and you will have everything I have or you can go to my GitHub repository and download it from there. All right, so I didn't want to waste your time having you watch me type in in different libraries I'm importing. I'm importing NumPy again. I'm importing Pandas, Matplotlib. I have a bunch of different Matplotlib things. I'm going to show you Matplotlib Finance briefly. This is the line you need if you want to be able to show all of your plots directly in your notebook. I'm not going to use stats models yet, but in the next video I will. Here's Seaborn, that's used for plotting. Here is a whole bunch of Plotly information. Here's Cufflinks, which connects Plotly to Pandas. And then here is a whole bunch of things to get Plotly to work properly inside of your notebook. If you want to pause your screen and type all that in, you are welcome to. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go get all that Amazon data and start plotting. All right, so I'm going to create a data frame here. And to get it, I'm going to use pandas. I'm going to go read CSV. Make sure that it is in the folder where you have this code you're creating. Otherwise, you won't be able to import it. And I want to set the dates as the index. And if you're wondering what this stuff in, looks like, this is the information we downloaded from Yahoo Finance. So dates, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and volume. And this is how we will reference them using open and close and all these other different things. All right, so I said that I want the index to be based, for my data frame anyway, to be based on a date. And I'm gonna say parse dates equal to true to make that happen and then uh one thing you want to do well let's go and make sure that it all came in there is the information that we downloaded and another thing you want to do is you want to verify that this is a date time index and that's how you do that all right so there we go we are ready to use the information and I, like I said, I am going to cut, show you how to plot using Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Plotly, and then you can decide which one you prefer. I am not one to judge if you like one over another. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to focus a little bit more in on Matplotlib, though, because it is more often used. Doesn't mean it's the best. Just means that it is used more often. Okay, so... I am going to define how big I want my plot area to be with figure size. I am going to define that I want this to be 100 DPI because that looks nice to me. I am then, whenever you want to do more advanced things with Matplotlib, it you know, takes more lines of code. So what we're going to do here is define axes and figure one is what we're referencing. And I'm going to add axes to it. And I'm going to say that I want them to take up, let's say, start in the bottom left-hand corner and then take up about 90% of the available area. That normally looks pretty nice. And then I can go about changing the different axis information. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a somewhat simple plot. And then later on in the tutorial, I will make one that really goes in and tweaks and makes things look Nice. All right, so I'm going to say the X label is going to have the name date. And I'm going to say that Y label is going to have closing price. And I am going to say that I want to set the title for the whole entire thing to be, and I'm going to make this matplotlib Amazon stock price. And then we will also, I have to plot everything, of course, so axes, and we call plot. And then what you pass in is what you want the information to be assigned for the X axes, which I want it to be the date. So if you want to reference what you assigned as the index, that's how you do that. 
Then if you want a specific column to be shown, I want closing price. So that was named close, if you remember when we looked at it. And then I can label that, give this a label of closing price for the actual plot. And if I would like to use a legend, it's not gonna really matter for this because there's only one plot, but I wanna show you anyway. Normally, if you just do location zero, that's going to look the best because what it does is it tries to figure out where is the best place to put the legend. You can type in one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it goes the whole way up to nine. Play around and see where those different locations go, but I almost always use location zero. And let's say that I also want to add a grid to mark this as true. And let's say that my color is going to be 60% gray. And I'm going to say that I want my dashes in my grid to be five, two, one, and two. This is a uh, sort of like a grid that sort of puts spaces and then dashes and so forth and so on. And if I run it, you'll see exactly what that looks like. Okay, so there you go. Matt Plot look, Amazon stock price. You can see there's the legend up there. And here is everything plotted out on our screen. So it looks pretty nice. So let's see what it looks like if I use Seaborn. So I'm gonna use figure three and plot and figure. Again, I'm gonna use the same stuff. So I'm gonna use figure size, same exact figure size, same DPI. I'm going to say that I want my ax, I'm gonna mark this as axis two is equal to S and S and do a line plot. Again, we're going to type in the data being equal to the DF1, which is the Amazon data. X is specifically going to be the index part of that data frame, so assign that. I am then also for Y, I'm just going to say close. And then I am going to throw a label on this that is going to be closing. And of course you can go and put these on separate lines and everything still runs. Okay, so what else do I wanna do? Well, if you want to set your X label axes, so this is gonna be axes two, you can just come in and say set and X label is equal to, and I'm gonna set that to date and Y label is equal to closing price. And what else do we wanna do? Let's set our title. So axes, and this is going, oops, axes two, and this is going to be set title. And for this, to make this stand out, I will say Seaborn Amazon stock price and I am going to do a legend for this you're gonna see that a lot of things are the same so we'll do legend and I'm gonna do location equal to zero just like I did before and then in, let's say I want to style the grid I can do set and style I'm going to use there's a whole bunch of different grid options that are available and I'm gonna use dark grid because I think that'll look all right. And then I am going to say axes and you define the color for these as well. And I am going to set this to 90%. And I'm also going to come in and you can, there's like all these default themes in, with Seaborn and one of them one of them's poster, which is really big, and one of them's notebook. So this is going to give you a theme that it Seaborn thinks is gonna look good in a notebook. So why don't we use that? I'm, you can do font scaling, and anything else I wanna do. Yes, you have to put an equal sign in there. And let's say that I wanna set the line width as well. You do say RC and lines and dot line width 
and this is going to be why don't I try 2.5 all right so that's what we're gonna do for Seaborn and there you can see the two different types so there's matplotlib's version of the plot and there is the Seaborn version of the plot and whichever you prefer is whichever you can use but now I want to show you Plotly because it does something interesting all right so Plotly is going to allow you to interact with your chart in different ways so let's say I go a figure two and you're gonna to have to say go figure and then we're going to say figure two dot add trace and we're going to say that this is a scatter point but this is kind of confusing it's just the way plotly does things this is not going to be a scatter plot this is going to be a line plot and i'll show you in a second where you define that so again we're going to define x as our index y is going to be df1 and we're going to say we want the close column and we are also here's where we define that we want to use the lines you can put scatter in there and it'll do scatter plots instead and then i'm going to give it a name of closing price and you're going to see that it's not that much here we're going to be able to do a ton the defaults are actually kind of neat you can do these plots and then do the update thing afterwards for homework to see how these updates are going to affect everything but I normally come in here and do some changes to what we have as a default so we're going to define some information about styling for our axes and what I'm going to define here is that I want to show the grid and if you mark it as false obviously it will not show it I'm going to show lines and I am going to show the tick labels so mark all of those as true then I'm going to do the same for the y-axis so I'm just going to copy this paste that inside of there and let everything else be exactly the same if I want a legend I have to say a show legend and mark that as true if I want to go and define a name for my x-axis this is how you do that and again I'm gonna mark this as date I am going to do y-axis and title and let's mark that as closing price and then I'm also going to give a title to the entire plot and I'm going to call this plotly Amazon stock price and I think I got everything there oh I got an error because I didn't change this to y-axis and there you can see is the plotly version of the same plot now I said there's something interesting about plotly and that interesting thing is that as I move around it will put different annotations for the changing prices which is kind of neat and also another thing Plotly has is the ability to zoom and pan around take pictures and do a whole bunch of other different things as you will see and Plotly gets even more advanced whenever we do more advanced plots that aren't simply line plots so there is a major difference between the different plotting options and now what I want to do is show you matplotlib finance because it's pretty cool all right and you're going to have to install matplotlib finance in a different way if you want to know how to do that in the description I'm gonna have a link to my matplotlib to tutorial click on that and then in the table of content contents look for matplotlib finance and it'll show you how to install it because I don't want to show you that again all right because you might not even be interested in it all right so what's neat about matplotlib finance is it goes and assumes a whole bunch of things and what it assumes is pretty cool so let's say i want to do a basic line plot here i can do that just with one line of code and look at that how cool that is all right so it went and printed all that information out and this is based off of price it always assumes that you want price and date by default 
But another thing that's really neat is we would be able to come in here and print out volume information and make decisions based off of whether to show a non-trading day information and so forth. This is very specific to the stock market, obviously. So what I want to do here is type and what I want to do is show line plots and a whole bunch of other different things like volume and all that. And how you do that is you type in OHLC as your type. And let's say I wanted to do a different moving averages. So remember I talked about moving averages in the last part of the tutorial. Well, you have to put this inside of braces like that. And there we are. What this is gonna do is it's gonna automatically create moving averages for the previous three, five, and seven observations. You can use multiple moving averages. And if I want to show volume, I can do so just by marking that as true. And then I can also come in here and say whether I want to have non-trading days be represented inside of my information. And I'm going to say that, yes, I do. I want that to be shown. And if I run that, you can see there's moving averages. It's probably better to zoom in closer, but there's different moving averages and there is all of your volume information and a whole bunch of other different things. And there's a whole bunch of things in regards to plotting candlesticks and all sorts of stuff. Like I said, if you want more information on that, look at my Matplotlib tutorial. I have a whole section just on Matplotlib finance. But I wanna focus more on what would be of interest to somebody who is working with time series. So up next, I'm gonna show you how to zoom in to specific time periods and also add more styling. All right, so this is going to mainly be focused on Matplotlib. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna copy some of the things I did here so I don't have to retype stuff in. So let's come in and let's grab all of this information. Come back down inside of here and paste that in. One thing that I might wanna do is I might wanna change the font size on my title. How do I do that? I say font size and let's try 20. And I think that's all I'm gonna steal from the previously written code. You know what all that stuff does. Okay, so Matplotlib is going to allow you to define different time periods to plot. And how you do that is we go DF and I'm gonna say that I want the closing information just like before. But then I say plot afterwards and I can come in here and do figure size and 12 by six. And let's try to go make this 12 by seven. And okay, so this is 12 by six. And what else do I wanna do? Well, if I wanna limit the X data coming into it, I can do so. So let's say that I want to get information from September 1st, the whole way through October the 16th. So I can do that. I'm gonna just say 2020-09-01. And then I want to go through 2020-16. Oh no, that would be 10-16. All right, so that's October the 16th. Let's say that I want to limit the amount of space taken up on the y-axis. So let's say 2750 to 3750 in regards to the price changes. I can also come in here and change the color for my line. So let's say I want my line to be red, I can do that. Let's say I want my line width to be equal to three, I can do that as well. And let's go see what that looks like. Just, I forgot to put the equal sign in there. Make sure you have that. And if you run it, you can see, created a line, a red line now with the line width that I said. It increased the size of the title and a whole bunch of other things. But does this look really nice? No, it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jazz up the look of this. All right, so how am I going to do that? Well, let's say for my lines, I would also like to come in here and I'd like to style them a little bit different. So I'm gonna say LS is equal to, and I'm gonna do dashes and dots instead. So let's try that. And that looks a little bit more interesting. So let's stick with that. Other things I could do. Well, you can see there's no legend here on the screen. So why don't I go in and add a legend? 
And let's go and shorten this so I don't have to type out so much. So I'm going to type axes, axes like this. All right. So I'm going to say that I want to add a legend. And I'm going to put the location in zero. All right. So that's looking a little bit better. There is our legend. Now let's say I would like to also come in here and mess around with our grid system. I'm going to say grid. Yes, I want a grid and color. And I'm going to say that I want this to be, how about 60, like that. And I'm going to use the same dash as I used before because I think they look pretty nice. So 5, 2, 1, and 2. Just more, make sure you put an equal sign in there. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit jazzier now. Not really in love with the uh, fonts and stuff that are working here, so I'm going to play around with those. Let's say that I would like to change my tick font sizes. I can do that. So that is tick params. And the axis I want to focus in on first is going to be my x axis. And let's say that I want the label size to be set for 15. And let's go and change the font size for the Y axes as well. So just change this to Y. And maybe we go and make that 18 instead. What else can we change? Let's say that I would like to change so that the date doesn't show down here because I don't really see any reason for that. It's obviously a date. So I'm going to say plot and x label and just set it to nothing. And I can do font size equal to, and let's change this to 18. And again, let's change the y label and let's set that to closing price. And let's go and change its font size to make it 16, a little bit bigger. Another thing I'd like to do is let's change this legend over here. It's kind of small. Let's change the font size on it. So I'm going to say legend and location equal to zero. And let's go and change its, its font size. And how you do that is go property and size and let's try 16. All right, so it's a little bit bigger. I can see it a little bit better. And I think the, the date's gone down here. I think everything's a lot more legible. So what else would I maybe want to play around with? Well, why don't I try to set the x-axis to put ticks by weekdays? All right, I'm gonna because I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to say axes 1 and x-axis set major locator and I'm going to have dates weekday locator and I'm going to say by weekday equal to zero and I'm going to have a link in the Jupyter Notebook on GitHub that's going to show you where to go online to get all of these. I'm going to show you some formatting options also however and I'm going to actually give you a whole bunch of examples. So I'm going to say, let's say I want to set that only the month and day are going to show on the X axis because it's the same year. So why would we do that? So how we do this is I say axis one X axis set major formatter dates date formatter. And I want to show the month and I also want to show the day. And now it just shows the month and the day, but I'd like to maybe even just have the day and then have like the month underneath of it. Can I do that? Yes, I can. But I'm gonna play around with some other things here first. I, oh, I said that I was gonna show you the other ways of formatting. There, here's the major ways and here's also the URL if you don't wanna go look at the Jupyter Notebook 
here if you want to show the years and the months and the months and abbreviated names and days and abbreviated days, you just put those in instead of putting M and D like I did right there. Okay, so what else do I want to do? Well, you know what? Why don't I just have the formatter show the day, like I had said. So let's just have the day show up in there. And then after that, what I want to do is I want to, let's just copy this and paste this inside of here. I want to set a minor locator. You're going to see what that looks like here in a second. So the minor locator, and I'm going to have that be set for the months. So let's just go and change this to month locator. And this is the URL where you go to find out month locator and date formatter and all these different things that are available to you. And this guy doesn't have anything inside of it. And let's go do a couple more styling things. If I'm going to format this as well. So let's go copy and paste that inside of there. And I'm going to have this be set minor and formatter and dates, date formatter. And for this guy, what I want to do is I actually want it to be underneath of the days. So to do that, I just throw in new lines. And then after that, I can have the actual month show up, the abbreviated month name. And then finally, let's say, well, let's go and run it, see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see, now I have September and October, and then here are the individual days. So it's starting to look a lot better. One thing I don't like though, is it's kind of straining my eyes to see these months. So let's say I want to change the font on that. So there we are, and you just go tick, params, and axes. I'm gonna set it for both. And I'm going to say which, and the specific one I want to change is the minor. And what I want to change is the label size for that minor. And I'm going to take it up to 15 and run it. And now you can see the month is bigger. All right. So you might say, well, is there any other formatting options available? What all? Of course. Now, while I re very I often don't do this, but I'm going to just show you just to show you. Okay, so let's say you wanted to mess around with markers, which are the dots inside of your chart. You can do a whole bunch of things. So let's say I want to change my marker inside of there to look like an O. You can put whatever you want inside of here, but I'm going to choose an O. And you can see it draws dots, big dots inside of there. Now let's say you want to really be obnoxious and start just doing crazy stuff. So let's say you want to change your marker size. That's not big enough, you say. So let's change it to five. And let's say that you would like to change the color of your marker. So that's marker face color. And let's say you want it to be blue. And there you are. And now it's blue. Okay, and just to show you a couple more things, you can also go in and change the edge color. So maybe you want the marker edge color to be equal to red. And then whenever you do that, you realize it's not big enough. So you decide to change the marker edge width to be equal to three. And there you are, and there you go. So there's our final plot looks pretty nice up until we started doing crazy things with the markers but hey maybe you think that looks good up to you and coming up next i'm going to be further exploring time series analysis whenever we dip our toes into learning more about stats models so like always please leave your questions and comments down below otherwise till next time